don't want them here. They're your nieces. The best thing for them is to be with family. There are some rules you'll need to follow. This door leads to the basement. It stays locked at all times. I saw Mom. Where? In the basement. What's up, Elizabeth? Nothing much. Just chilling at home. Nothing else to do. <laughs> well, I know. Well, you're homeschooled, aren't you? Yeah, but I finished already today. Oh, well, there's nothing else to do, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My, you've grown. I saw you at, uh, we hung out at Fan X in Salt Lake last September. Yes, I remember. Yeah, you, you just gotten so big. <laughs> Making me feel old. <laughs> Well, you're still stay, staying busy. Uh, what's the talk about behind you? And uh, you carry this film. Were you, was there any kind of pressure? Are you nervous about carrying this thriller? Well, being the one who controls a lot of the storyline, I did my best to just like, I don't know, because I don't speak a lot. So I was really trying to just use my expressions and relate to the character in a way that was natural. And I think I worked out well, but luckily Addie Miller was there and she was able to help me through it, but yeah. And as for an actor, that's probably the most difficult thing is to convey emotions and the story without any dialogue. Did you have any special techniques or any kind of acting coach or the directors uh, give you some, some pointers? Acting with no dialogue just seems to come natural with me. Sometimes I think dialogue is harder for me. I'm not sure why, but I just imagined what I would feel like during that situation most of the time or just, or if I did need help, obviously I could always talk to my amazing directors, Andrew Meekum and Matthew Whedon. But yeah, it just kind of came natural to me. And having two directors, that's really unusual. So how, how did that work out? Well, see, that was my first film. So I had no idea that sometimes there was only one director, but they worked really well together. Andrew was kind of more like the mom figure, I guess. She definitely like made sure everything, he made sure he got everything done. And Matthew kind of acted as like a funny dad type of character who was just, helping us get through it, you know? And, and this being your first film, was there a particular day or scene you were dreading that was like the most difficult? Like, oh, today's the day I have to shoot this scene and am I ready for it? Or, or just didn't even need to sleep the night before? <laughs> there were a couple of those times. I'd say for physically draining and emotionally just draining, there's one scene where I'm pretty much screaming and attacking someone the whole time. And it was 3 a.m. and I was just tired because we were filming the entire movie overnight except for a couple of scenes, which was during the day. So we'd be there until like four o'clock in the morning. And I was, I remember after that scene, I was just shaking because I was like so tired. But another funnier situation is when I had to eat meat in this film, but I'm a vegetarian. So we made a compromise, but I was getting sick to my stomach just thinking about it, but we made it work. You went, you headed to Burger King to get some Impossible Burgers to put it as a stand-in or? <laughs> well, actually, um, I'm pretty sure his name was Joe. I can't quite remember after three years, but he, he took mashed up cookies and like put it on a bone, like a meat bone. So like Ew. when it wasn't a close up, I just eat the cookies, which it was better than me. But there was one time where I got a good close up of me. In a way. <laughs> well, this being your first film, tell me about how you found this script. And when was that aha moment you went, Mom, I found it. This is it. We gotta do this. <laughs> 
Well, so I have a mutual friend, Sally Meyer, who's a lovely person. And she had gotten a script for one of her other younger friends. And since this um, movie has sisters, I would be auditioning for the younger sister because who she had in mind looked like me and it, it just worked out. So I was like, well, I just will audition. It's a big deal to do a horror movie and do your first film. But um, and then I went in for the audition and it was around 45 minutes of me just talking and trying to do my best. And in the script originally, I had a part where I was supposed to scream. And I was really excited about getting to scream. And I asked them, I was like, oh, do you guys want me to scream? And they're like, no, it's not needed. And I was like, oh. And then they're like, you can scream if you want. <laughs> and I ended up screaming. And then callback came around. I was so ecstatic that I even got it just that far, like a callback. Is and, that's not, and that's not so unusual because a lot of actresses say when they do their horror films in their audition, they're asked to scream. So that's like almost standard. So. Yeah. Yeah, and callback came around, screamed again. <laughs> Another like hour of a callback, and again in person because I live in Utah where it was being filmed. But yeah, it, it worked out in the end. And and you're pretty much the catalyst for this entire film because you go, you and your sister go live with your aunt who doesn't want you there anyway. Gives you some rules: stay out of the, these certain rooms. But you go to the basement, you find a mirror, and you release a demon. I mean, yeah. How irresponsible well, can you be, Elizabeth? She did it for her mother. She believed that she was helping her mother. So, and as a little girl, 11 year old little me, of course I would do anything for my mom, you know? But yeah, she kind of, she, she kind of does everything that makes it, everything go wrong, but that's okay. And how does this, you know, we're, all, we're all quarantined right now. And I, so are you like promoting this through all your friends going, hey, that movie I was making, it's coming out. Have a little watch party on Facebook or something. Yeah, I've been thinking about doing something like that. I'm not exactly sure what I'm planning to do, but I definitely want to get my friends together virtually to watch it. <laughs> and did you what, carry a stuffed bunny or a stuffed animal the entire movie? or? I had a, yes, a stuffed bunny. Her name was Lucy B. And she kind of also acts as a catalyst for the story. <laughs> did you take it home with you, a little souvenir? No, I, I mm, mm, mm. after being in that environment of horror, I guess, with her being a part of it, I was like, there's no way. No, I'm already kind of scared of dolls, not necessarily stuffed animals, but. <laughs> no. After a few weeks in quarantine, you'd start looking at the bunny differently, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure I would. I, my brain would just. <laughs> And uh, a little while, uh, a little earlier, I spoke to your co-star, Amy Lynn Chadwick, and she was just said the nicest things about you. Oh, I love her. I miss her, but I haven't seen her in a while. I went to her, what's it called, a bachelor par bachelorette party or something? I'm not sure, like a wedding party. And so I got to see her then, but it's been a while. I miss her. She's such a sweetie. So are you ready now? You just started your first movie. It's a horror film. It's going to get a, a lot of attention all over video on demand, Amazon and everywhere. Are you expecting a lot of offers to come rolling in for different projects now? Yeah, you never know. Like getting cast in this was such a random moment. And since filming Behind You three years ago, I've done other projects. So I don't know if Behind You will lead to anything else, but only time will tell. And with quarantine, you have no idea, so. Well, congratulations on the film, and uh, I'm so happy for you. And uh, when Fanex rolls around again, we'll hang out in Salt Lake together. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks so much, and say hi to your mom for me. I will, thank you. Bye. Bye.